This week we're making food from Bataan in Southern Asia. Our main course is going to be emadachi, which is a big pile of peppers with some homemade farmer's cheese that we're gonna make. We're also gonna be making some garlic ginger chicken dumplings called Momo with a chutney dipping sauce. Along with that, we're gonna be making a pastry called Kopsi and a steaming hot glass of butter tea, which has been described both as more like a soup and an acquired taste. This is the food tour. So we're actually going to start our sauce the night before. We don't really need to, but we have a lot to make tomorrow. So we're just trying to get as much out of the way as possible. And we're gonna start with three cups of water that we are going to bring to a boil. And now we're gonna add two whole tomatoes. We're also going to de-seed four red chilies. And we're going to reserve the seeds. Those just get added to the pot as well. This we're just gonna let boil for about eight to nine minutes. We've gone about halfway through our boil and I'm just gonna give the tomatoes a flip. After our nine minutes are up, I'm going to strain our tomatoes. And then we're just gonna let them cool for a bit. Once our tomatoes have cooled a little bit, I'm just gonna remove the skins, and then I'm just going to give the tomatoes a rough chop. We're gonna add that along with our red peppers from earlier. We're also going to peel and throw in five cloves of garlic. Maybe, you know, dry off all the tomato juice. We're going to add in, a, I don't know, a reasonable amount of Szechuan peppercorns about a half teaspoon of sugar, some black pepper, a bit of salt, and however many of our reserve seeds that you wanna add. And this is for you, Bhutan. And now we will just blend until smooth. I guess probably not too smooth. I don't think they're liquefying things in a Vitamix. And then this will store for about a week in the fridge. The other perk to making it in advance is that letting it sit overnight will let the flavors meld a little bit better. Should be a little smoother this way. It smells like, like watered down pizza sauce. So we just have one last thing we wanna to do today and that is make fresh farmer's cheese. We're gonna start by adding a half gallon of whole milk into a pot on medium low. This feels like a bit of a waste, but I know we'll have cheese at the end of it. And we just want that to get to about 190. We don't want it to fully boil because, I don't know, that's what the recipe told us. But we're still gonna wanna stir occasionally to prevent it from scalding at the bottom. Hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. We are just a hundred degrees away. Once we've reached 190, just before it starts to boil, we're gonna turn it off and we're gonna stir in a fourth of a cup of lemon juice, along with two tablespoons of white vinegar. We're just gonna stir that in and we're gonna let it sit for about 15 minutes and that'll give the curt, oh, they're already starting. All right, so our 15 minutes have finished. It looks about the same. If you wanted to, you could also have thrown in some herbs while we wait for the 15 minutes. Uh, we're not gonna do that for this just because I don't know what it's supposed to taste like. We're gonna pour this through a strainer lined with damp cheesecloth. Well, that's messy. What we're left with looks a bit like cottage cheese. Well, now I have to go to the bathroom. And then we're just going to gently coax out whatever remaining liquid we can. Good Christ, that's up. And we're just gonna keep twisting 
to get out some more of that whey. What we're gonna be left with is more like a dry feta. How is there so much left? How? I think we're gonna call that good. So what we're left with is, uh, I don't know, a crumbly sort of cheese. It smells less strongly of hot mayonnaise. Just gonna toss that with a little bit of salt. And when I say a little bit, I mean a lot, so it doesn't taste gross. Just gonna mix that in really quick. Then we're just gonna wrap it back up. This is gonna be the final shape it takes, so try to get it a little bit smooth. But, I mean, we're just gonna break it up anyway, so who cares? Invert a smaller plate on top of it, and then top it with a heavy pan like a Dutch oven. So we're just gonna leave the heavy Dutch oven on top of it to push out any of the remaining whey. We're gonna leave it in the fridge overnight. That'll just give it its final shape. It is a new day, and today we are gonna start our steamed dumplings. Into the bowl of a food processor, we're gonna add about two and a half cups are 12 and a half ounces of all-purpose flour. And then while it's running, we're gonna add about a cup of boiling water. And what we're left with is a mm, hot, very crumbly mixture that we are gonna dump out onto the table and finish kneading. It looks like a bit of a mess, but once we knead it, it should come together into a pretty tight ball. It's smooth, but it's not a cohesive dough like you would expect with bread. But we've got it just formed together, and we're going to wrap it and let it sit for about 30 minutes to relax. And while we wait, we're gonna make our Momo filling. I'm adding a pound of ground chicken to a large bowl. Then I'm adding in a third of a cup of shredded carrot. I'm adding about three tablespoons of roughly chopped cilantro. It's a generous three tablespoons. Two and a half tablespoons of sweet rice wine. I've got two green onions fresh from the garden and they are ridiculously sized. Just gonna chop them about uh, an inch. I'm adding about two tablespoons of grated ginger. I'm adding about a tablespoon of minced garlic. And we're gonna finish that off with about a half tablespoon of sesame oil. And then we're just mixing by hand. We're gonna wrap this, set it in the fridge, and wait for our dough to finish. 30 minutes have passed, and we are gonna turn our Momo dough out onto a lightly floured counter. It's come together a little bit better. We are going to try rolling it out into about a 12 inch log. When we've got our 12 inch log, we're gonna divide it into four. One piece we're gonna keep, three pieces we're gonna put under a damp cloth. For our one piece of dough, we are going to roll this out into eight inches now. We've got our eight inches. I'm gonna divide it into about five pieces. I'm gonna set them cut side up, sprinkle them with a little bit more flour, and we're gonna smush them out. Once we've got them lightly pushed down, we are gonna roll this out about as thinly as we can. And it's gonna stick a lot, but as far as I know, that's okay. Once we have it rolled out, we're just gonna store it under another damp towel just until we're ready to fill. Once we've got our first batch of wrappers rolled out, we are going to fill it with our stuffing. Uh, one thing to note though is as soon as I added it to the bowl, I, I realized that these green onions should have been very finely diced because that's going to be quite gross to eat a whole big mouth of. We're gonna add about a half a tablespoon of filling to each. It doesn't seem like enough. A tablespoon of filling to each. Then I'm just gonna run a little bit of water around the edge, pinch to cover. I'm gonna trim off the excess, I think. Gonna give it a pleated pinch. And then we're gonna store that on a lightly floured baking sheet and cover that with another damp cloth until we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. 
And here we've got our Momo. No one might mistake it for something a Bhutanese grandma might have made, but I think they look good enough. For our Emadachi, we are starting with a half of a pound of serranos and a jalapeno. All we're doing for these is we're going to take off the stems and take out the seeds. But we're gonna throw them in just half. They don't get diced up at all. Here are half pound of peppers all sliced up. It seems like a lot and that's because it is. It's gonna be ridiculously spicy and probably unpleasant to eat, but to this we're adding a diced sweet onion. We're adding three fourths cups of water, about two teaspoons of olive oil, and then we're just gonna bring it to a boil. So once we've got it at a boil, we're just gonna let it go for about 10 minutes and just pray to God that it gets less spicy. All right, 10 minutes have passed and our peppers have just started to break down a little bit. We're gonna drop the heat down to about medium low and then we're gonna dice one tomato along with four cloves of garlic. Once we've added our tomatoes and garlic, we're just gonna let that simmer for a couple more minutes before covering, and then we're gonna start on our dumplings. In a saute pan, we're just gonna set it to a medium high heat, and we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of oil, just enough to coat the bottom. We're gonna let that warm up a little bit before we add our dumplings. Just gonna add the dumplings one at a time, about an inch apart. Let it cook for about a minute until the bottoms are browned, and then we're gonna add our water. So when we've got our nice browned bottom, we're gonna add a fourth cup of water and let it steam. We're gonna let this go for three minutes before we eat it. And in the meantime, we're gonna finish our emadachi. Take a look at our cheese. Got a very nice firm block. And we're just gonna add this to our emadachi and stir it in. We've got about a half pound of this that we're gonna add in or sprinkle all over the floor. We wanna heat it until it just melts. We don't want it to go any further than that. This feels like a lot of cheese. So we have our emadachi on top of a bed of brown rice. Then we have our momo here with our chutney dipping sauce. I would say off the bat, emadachi does not look I think cats are f I would say the emadachi does not look particularly appetizing. It does just look like boiled peppers and uh, looks like paneer. <coughs> Good Christ, that's hot. I mean, that's spicy. I think my heart stopped. I'm gonna try the Momo. Wow. These look like regular dumplings. They smell like donuts. The chutney just looks like, like watered down tomato. It's quite dry. It makes me miss the fat of like a pork dumpling. It needs a little something in there because it's kind of chalky, but I'm also gonna eat another one because I'm scared of the emadachi. I think it does need the chutney because it's also very under seasoned. I think the chutney is under seasoned as well. There's not really any salt, it's just a lot of bland salsa and super high heat. Cheese doesn't taste like much. No, it's hot. No, it's hot. I'm really scared to do this. It's warm. It's um, not particularly flavorful, I would say. The cheese doesn't taste like much. The peppers don't taste like much. I think all around. It's just a, a straight punch of spice right in your face. <sighs> it makes me miss the dumplings. The, like, the fatty cheese isn't even like a relief. It's just soaked up a lot of the the spice. I would say it's a good dish if you like the, the flavor of peppers, because it is pronounced. 
My mouth is numb. Trying not to cry. Ah! I'm torn between wanting to eat the ah, wanting to eat the dumpling to cool off, but it's also so bland that I want to dip it in the, the Szechuan pepper chutney. I didn't think this was gonna be like and hot ones. Hats off to you, Baton. You've got a problem. I think it's a cry for help. Just move. If you have to eat something so hot just to taste it, just to feel alive, just move. Just get off of the mountain. Go literally anywhere else. This is hard. This is fine. It tastes good. I respect your culture. <sighs> and now it's time for dessert. All right, so we're gonna start by dissolving about a tablespoon and a half of sugar into a half cup of warm water. We've also got about a cup of all-purpose flour, which we're gonna combine with about two tablespoons of oil, another fourth cup of milk, and then our sugar mixture. We're just going to mix to combine. I hope it gets a lot thicker. And that looks much too wet. We're looking for more cookie dough than pancake batter. We're gonna turn this out on a lightly floured counter. I'm still a little worried that this is much too wet for what we need it for, but let's give it a go. We are going to try rolling this out to about a fourth of an inch. So once we have them rolled out, we're gonna cut it into diagonal strips about, I would say, an inch wide. And then for each strip, we're gonna cut it about uh, two inches. No, I don't know, three inches long? I don't know how long an inch is. We're gonna make a slit down the middle. I should probably use a knife. We're gonna grab one end, tuck it through the other, and we've got our dough. So we've got our dough shaped to some wildly uneven sizes. We've got our oil heated to uh, 325, which is exactly where we want it. We are gonna start frying our dough. And we're gonna let it get just golden brown. As they fry, we're just gonna take them off to a paper towel lined plate. So while we cook our kapse, we're also gonna bring two cups of water to a boil. This will be for our butter tea. We're gonna boil one bag of black tea and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. All right, our tea has finished its simmer. We are going to remove the tea bag and we're gonna add it to a blender. We're also gonna add in a half cup of half and half, a generous tablespoon of butter and a half teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt. We're then just gonna blend it until smooth. All right, we're finishing up our Bhutanese meal with kapse and a nice hot glass of Bhutanese hot butter tea. I would say off the bat, these smell and look a lot like funnel cake, which after uh, that pepper stew, I think, I'm, I think I'm richly deserved. It smells like grease and powdered sugar. It tastes a thousand years old. It's just about the hardest fried pastry I think I've ever had in my life. It stings the teeth a little bit. It's like if you smashed a donut and then you deep fried it again. I mean, I'm still eating it because it's still fried dough covered in powdered sugar, but I wouldn't say I, I love it. It smells very fruity. It reminds me of pizza, very fatty. The foam especially is pure salt. It feels like drinking a hot chocolate. It tastes like you've got your face in a pizza. I don't know how to describe it better than that. That's still not great. So that's Bhutanese food. We had emadachi on a bit of rice, momo, and we dipped in some tomato chutney, kapse, the bit of powdered sugar, 
and we had hot butter tea, which is surprisingly drinkable, despite my description of it. Yeah, I don't know. I like it. Would I make any of these dishes again? I'm probably gonna give it a pass. Granted, a lot of these things could have been fixed with like a little tweaks, I think. I don't know, uh, just like a little salt, a lot more pork, uh, an entirely different composition of ingredients. I think I would have liked it better. I think it would have fit my particular taste, but that's not staying true to the actual recipe, which makes it a little tricky because you need to honor the, the traditional recipe so we know what it's actually supposed to taste like, but then also I wanna not I want to not take offense at every dish we come across. I gotta stop drinking that. That's disgusting. Actually, no, it's okay. So I probably wouldn't make these dishes again, but um, I'd be happy to try something else if anyone has any recommendations. Or if anyone has any insight into what I screwed up. Thank you for watching. This is the food tour.